Okay, so um, we're just going to lay this out with a uh, with a combination square here uh, and bandsaw it kind of to net shape and then uh, clean it up a little bit on the mill. Um, there's no um, particular uh, uh, need for precision here. Sharpie cam, right? And, uh, it's six inches tall. And this gets lopped off here. Go that way. So, alright. And then this is a uh, 45. At the bottom part. I'm sure that was five eighths. So that's a little cutout for the feet. And then it was seven eighths the other way, I think. Like that. And then you know I'll just uh, kind of hand do the radiuses. There's, there's one, and uh, um, unfortunately this isn't, uh, this blank isn't quite big enough to get two out of it. Um, so what I'll do is uh, I'll cut this one out and then I'll tr transfer it to the second blank. So we'll do a little bandsaw work and uh, come back and uh, do some milling. Okay, so we got it uh, uh, sawed out and I'm just going to go around with this uh, ceramics bladed scraper here and just kind of knock some of the the fuzz off. And this just makes it easier to uh, lay the other one there and uh, transfer it. We're gonna go back and mill this stuff too, so so that it's kind of nice for Dad. Not giving him any uh, any schlocky work there, you know. Right. So this little guy, this is a ceramic. It's made by guess what, Noga. And uh, this is great for uh, for kind of soft plastics uh, deburn. It's like super hard fingernail is kind of what it's like, um, and it stays sharp. Or you know, basically, it's just got a square edge, so that you you're using it kind of like a scraper. Okay, so then we'll uh, we'll transfer this over, bandsaw this one out, then we'll stack these together and we'll mill them out. Okay, so we got these in the vise. Now these are sticking up a little bit high here, uh, and especially since they're only half inch thick. But if we sandwich these together uh, with a couple of a couple of clamps, they kind of lend some support to one another, and we can mill the top off. And um, or sometimes what I'll do is I'll I'll actually clamp a piece of metal in there that's shorter, just to stiffen a a setup like this up, just to make it convenient to. Uh, uh, access in the mill like that. All right, we're gonna come down and touch off. We're just gonna, oops, zero the quill there. All right, and it's gonna take about 50 thousandths off, something like that. All right, make sure the vise is tight. And that one's not even close to cleaning up yet. Alright, so that looks like a clean up on, well, not quite on the second one. Alright, so we'll drop down about 20 thousandths. 
There we go. Now I expect to take more off here. I'm going to take a measurement and then uh, we'll see where we're at. some calipers. These, these big ones here. And in this case I'm just gonna pop it out just because it's a lot more convenient. Alright, so they want to be six inches. Okay, or 150 millimeters. And they're six inches, sixty-two thousandths. Once again, this is not a, a precision uh, endeavor, so I'm just going to zero that. I'm going to go down my 62 thousandths because that's what I'm going to do. Feels pretty good. Just feeling it. And this stuff cuts wonderfully here. This is that starboard material. Oh yeah. And uh, we're running about uh, 875 RPM, something like that. So one inch, uh, 25 millimeter uh, end mill, two flute. So I'm establishing two parallel edges here and then that makes the rest of the operation pretty easy then. And I don't know what we're going to use just yet, we'll, uh, we'll see here. Okay, okay so we're going to set this up <clears throat> and uh, to do some of these edges here and you know this is kind of a kind of a kooky shape here so um, you know starts to become a little bit of a holding problem right well we're going to do something like that but we're going to open this up way up and we're going to use one of the uh, one of the plates out of our our mini pallet kit I have a bunch of different flavors of plates um, and you see I got it down below the surface there a little bit and I got a sneaky reason for that. Alright, let's get that in there. That seated in there. So what we're going to do is we're, oops, actually let's go the other way. Since we got a nice parallel edge that we created there, right, I can just use that as a stop. And then I'm going to hang this side over here. And then we'll hold this with a couple of clamps. And uh, we'll mill this edge here down to this intersection. And then we'll have to tip it for the 45, but we'll do that uh, in a separate setup. Um, I suppose I could, I could stack these if I wanted to get, well, I don't know, maybe we ought to try. Well, it saves work, right? Um, no real reason to not stack it. Let's see if the clamps will reach there. Those are my favorites. Now these are the Cant Twists, uh, two and a half inch, but they're the deep throat. So they're deeper throat, and I really these are. I'd have to say uh, my. Uh, ones I grab all, in fact you can see they're all beat up, well not too beat up, but uh, well used. Let's just leave it at that. Used and abused. Not too many uh, end mill marks in them. Alright, so that one's registering there. We just have to bring this one back to it. You know sometimes stacking, in fact you know what, I'm not going to do it. Sometimes stacking is more trouble than it's worth. Um, if you just get a good clean setup that's easy to swap over and uh, you know it uh, it becomes 
you know, trivial just to swap the parts and uh, handling a, you know, a stack situation can be uh, uh, kind of dodgy sometimes. So, all right, let's do that. All right, I got plenty of overhang there. Feels rigid, okay. So I'm gonna come over, I'm gonna pick up on this edge um, and uh, I'm gonna go read my drawing to see how far down I have to come. I believe it's four inches to that intersection, but uh, I gotta double check. Okay, so I got my numbers. Let's, uh, this is a finished edge here, so we're just gonna pick up on that. And I'm just going to use my uh, paper deal on that. I'm not holding on to it very tight, so it's just going to come up and take that paper away from me right there. Okay? So that's about three thousandths off. Okay? And I know this edge is one inch in. And my number is 3 inch 793 um, to the uh, to that proper intersection there. Don't get alarmed by the uh, um, what do I want to say the uh, you know me uh, eating into the lines there because I got plenty of uh, plenty of excess there. And I'm looking for my X number, which is one one inch off of that edge. Six, seven, eight, nine, and one. Okay, and then heat up nicely here. And this stuff cuts like cream cheese here, so it's pretty nice. Okay, so that's one edge nicely done. And I think what I'm going to do to uh, to speed this up a little bit is I'm going to set a stop against that. That way I can just flip these over and I butt it against that and I butt it against this stop and uh, Bob's your uncle, so. So we're changing the setup around a little bit. Uh, I've raised this up so it's above the surface. Um, now what we want to do is we want to cut these 45s here. And so how do we do that, right? You know, uh, well, I'm going to pitch the part at a 45, but what I need is I need an accurate, well, reasonably accurate pickup so that we get good tangency on our cut. So the way I'm going to do that, uh, I'm going to use one of... Uh, Shaden HKW's uh, little squares that he made me here. We're gonna pop one of those up here, and we'll we'll clamp that down just so it stays in position. And we're gonna be somewhere in that region, I think, like that. So that'll be a stop in one direction. Then I'll rotate this around, and I'll uh, maybe not put it there. Maybe I'll put it right here, or maybe I'll put uh, a pallet clamp there or whatever, just to stop against that. And um, and then we have to pick up that uh, we have to pick up that center, and to do that, I'm going to use a little plug here that's the same diameter. I'm just going to pick up on that, and then I'm just going to go burp and just come out like that. And then uh, we can just flip these over and binkity binkity bink. Uh, Bob's your uncle. <laughs> All right, so this is kind of a 
So I got everything kind of loose right now and I got my plug kind of close to where I want it to be. So I'm just coming up against that, that plug and then I want to rotate into my, into my stop here like so. Oop. Hey, wrong tool there, Mr. Wizard. Okay, lock that down. And then that one's feeling actually a little tight. Uh, I think what I want to do, I want to redo that a little bit. Let go of that. Right, come that way a little bit. So let's have a little bit of play in both. There we go. Trying to get off of that one there. Okay, there we go. against that. And, you know what, let's do this. Cinch that little monkey down. Pop up and then I can I can secure that. And I'm just kind of gently pushing against that. Once again this isn't a super fussy setup here. Oh, let's do this before I blow that. All right, zero the DRO. I'm gonna flip that over just to give me a little more access. Okay, I think we're ready. So it's gonna be, I'll change over to the cutter and then we'll drop in and then we'll just come right out of there. Zero, zero. All right, and very gingerly. Oh yeah, it feels fine. goes okay All right. eh, it's a, a little bump there but visually it looks pretty good all right so a few more of those and uh, we'll have those the uh, shoulders done well today's the uh, the, the kooky setup day <laughs> so uh, I got a parallel here and uh, that's my uh, I'll just kind of bust it down a little bit here so I'm able to use my little corner stop there. So I butt against here, I come up to that, and now lock this down. All right, like so. All right, and then I'll pick up this edge. I know the distance from here to this bottom, and then I know the distance from my stop to the, the center here that I can just follow that. So let's... Uh, over there. Uh -oh. All right, fundamental problem. Let's see if I can make it here. And there's okay. So what's happening right now is I I'm out of I'm out of uh, Y travel here. Although I think I eh, can't really because I I usually run the ram forward that way I don't have to reach so far in. Um, so. I only have a little bit of travel beyond the back jaw of the vise, so uh, um, I'll probably just scoot the ram back a little bit and uh, give me give myself a little room so I can pick up on that. So pretty straightforward. All right, so I'm back. I don't want to catch the vise jaw here, so I want to make sure I'm low enough but not too low. All right, so let's pick up that edge. And we're just going to do a paper pickup on that. Okay, get it close. You can feel the paper start to vibrate when it's getting close. Okay. Put that for absolute. And my numbers are 1 inch 375 for the first pocket. Let's see, make sure I'm tight here. Or the first 
uh, edge in this direction. All right, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna come into five eighths, five eighths deep, 100, 500. I got ways to go. Oh yeah, I got plenty of room under there. Six, 25, okay. I'm gonna drive along there nice and smooth to three and five eighths. That's it. All right, let's take a look at that. Oop, don't take those off. All right, so that looks pretty nice, huh? A little deburring and uh, we're in business. All right, one more. Well, the mini pallet's certainly getting a, uh, a workout today. Um, what we're gonna do is drop our, uh, our little, um, stop screws in and those are just low head uh, um, socket head screws. I'm going to put one there and that will be the stop in this direction. And then uh, put, a, put one there and we'll put one there. And now these will be our kind of our location fence here. I gotta get some shorter ones of these, these little low head guys. Because they're, you know, they always go in just flush like this typically. Alright, so now we got a nice fence to stick that up against. And uh, we'll clamp this down in a couple of spots here, and then we're gonna mill out this, this <coughs> center bit here. Um, let's see, come over there, does that buy me? Oh, you know what? Yeah, I think. I'm going to move those up one. Just to. Gonna work. And there, one there. Barely one there. Yeah, you gotta move it up. Alright, sorry guys. Sorry about that. All right. Well, let me get. The, I'll get this squared away, and then, um, um, and then we'll come back for the cutting. All right. So, I got my little cheat note here uh, for this rectangle. Um, I've zeroed the cutter on the bottom here, so that I know when I'm coming down to touch that. I've zeroed that on the uh, uh, the quill readout. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and just take a few thousandths, and then cut out the outline of this rectangle. Then what I want to do is move off of that towards the inside to cut the main part out and then come back out to the proper profile for the finish cut. So let's uh, let's do that. That's about a thousand RPM. I'm just gonna I'm on the I'm on the first number here. Alright so I'm just gonna cut in a little bit there. And my first number is uh, 4.75. Okay, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. And then I'm going to come down to 2.125. Two, one, twenty-five. Okay, and back to six twenty-five. And you see, I'm running kind of a slow spindle speed there for plastic. Uh, it's just so I don't melt it um, and uh, overheat it. I gotta pay attention to my number here. So seven, six. Five, and then back to my 875 here. Eight, seven, five. Okay. All right, let's pop 
pop out of there. Take a look. This has got this plastic film on it. Let's get that business off of there so you guys can see this properly. So now that's how you get cut, farting around like this, right? Is not from the rotating cutter, right? But you know, you reach in there to to check something, and you you bump into that little pecker wood, and then uh, you're then you're singing the blues. Okay, so there's my outline, and uh, so now what I can do is I just kind of come off of that a little bit. All right, and now what I can do is. I can go in there and just kind of bury the cutter. Okay, I think it just went through. There we go. All right, let's just, and you see a little bit of aluminum came up, which is okay. So here, I'm just, I'm just watching where I am in relation to that line probably speed that up a little bit. And then the part we want to be careful with is right when, uh, you know, the piece will start to vibrate a little bit coming up pretty soon here. I can, it's starting to move now. I can feel it a little bit. And most of the time it just cooperates and just kind of pops loose like that. Okay. Now we'll get that out of there. Okay, so now what we can do, we just kind of go into our, where we belong there. Kind of back into that corner. Like that. Look at that stuff come off of there. It's like, like butter. And so, you know, I can see when I'm getting close here, when I need to start looking at numbers and paying attention there, right about like that. For 625 here, and we back go back up into the corner. It. But, um, I just thought I'd mention it. Some guys might be wondering, gee, why didn't you just clamp this in the vise, right? You got these nice parallel sides and all that. But what's going on here is we're, we're cutting away a lot of this material. So when we're squeezing this, right, in the vise, it feels great when that isn't there or when this is material's there, right? But as we come around and relieve that, it actually loosens in the vise. So um, when you have a kind of a, a picture frame like this with narrow uh, narrow walls. Now in aluminum this wouldn't be a problem, but in plastic, which is kind of squishy, this could be a problem. So holding it down like this is, is a better bet 
uh, on on this kind of a picture frame situation where these are these are a little little wonky. I can squeeze that and make it move a little bit. Anyway, just a little point there.